And there are many ways to create machine learning models. We can use our desktop, we can use virtual machines, we can use cloud environments with studios. However we create them, at the end of the process, we want to take those models and actually put them to work in production environments. Very often the way we want to do that is to deploy the model behind a web API. So in this video, I'm going to use Azure ML to do that. So I will create a very quick model just to show you how to get a model into Azure ML. And then from there, the meat of it is we'll deploy it to an endpoint and then practice how to consume that endpoint from outside using an API test tool. So let's get into it. I'm going to start from scratch with a solution. So the first thing I'll do is create a new resource group and I'll just call that um, deploy endpoint. So I'll delete this later. So I'll choose my region, create. And next I'll create an Azure machine learning workspace. Click on that, create. Choose the resource group I just created. Give it a name. Call it deployed endpoint demo. All this, uh, all the defaults are fine. View and create. Create. Okay, now I'm, we see up here I'm waiting for this group to be created. It's being deployed. So the deployment succeeded. Now if I go to that resource, the next thing I want to do is launch the studio. So a new tab opens up and we land at ml.azure.com and we can see that we are in our new workspace that we just created. So deploy endpoint is a resource group. Deploy endpoint demo is the workspace. Let me cancel that. So we're going to need a couple things in order to complete this exercise. One of them is going to be to add data into the solution. So we'll come back and do that in a minute. Another is to add a compute resource that our Jupyter Notebook will use to do its work. I'm going to create that first because it'll take a couple of minutes. So we'll create a new compute. Um, I'll call that rcur2, that's fine. It's going to be a CPU type. I'm going to choose pretty much the least expensive one because the data set I'm working with is pretty small. So this is an 18 cents an hour compute resource that's dedicated for me. And that looks fine. And next, I want it to shut down if I have sort of walked away for half an hour, let's say. Next, and all this is fine actually. No tags and create. Okay, so that's going to create. And while that's going on, let's take a look at the other things we're going to do. So we'll have a compute. We'll want to add some data here. And at the end, we're going to add an endpoint. However, first we need to create the model that will be in the endpoint. So the, I know I'm going to work with data. So let me go ahead and add that. So I'm going to add a data asset. And what this will do is is I'm going to upload just a CSV file that I have on my desktop and put that into the ML workspace environment so other users could see it. Uh, but more importantly, when I, I'm going to run the Jupyter Notebook within the ML environment and it will be able to see it. The data I'm going to use is a well-known diabetes predictive data set from NIST. So I'll just call that diabetes data. And this is going to be a file. Yeah, just a file. Okay, I'm going to upload this file from my desktop. And open. So that will upload the file. It's a really small file, so it uploads very quickly. And click Next. And create that data set. So that data set is, is uploaded. And you notice there's this current version over here. So when I do store data in these data sets, they, they store by version. So if I uploaded another version, then another version would come up, but I would still maintain that, that prior version. So very nice design, I think, for managing data sets. Okay, so let's check on our compute. And I'm going to actually pause the video until the compute is complete. 
Okay, so the creation of the compute is done. And I probably got a message to say that. Yes, good. Get rid of that. Okay, so we've got our compute. We've got our data. So the next step is to create a predictive model that we can then deploy to an endpoint. So I'm going to do that using a Jupyter Notebook. And if I go to the notebook section, I can see that if I had other people in my work group and working with this uh, workspace as well, then, then you, would, you would see their work here as well. But this is a brand new workspace. I'm the only user. Um, I'm going to create a folder to store this data or to store my notebook in. I'll just call that diabetes as well. And now I have a new folder. I'm going to create a new notebook within this folder. So I'm going to call this not untitled. Let's call this diabetes notebook. That's going to be a notebook. Create. So let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. And I'll just this column a little bit over here. The first thing we're going to do is read in the data that we just uploaded into a data frame. And so we'll just use a standard pandas read CSV. Um, we need to put in here where to get the file from. So let's go back over to that data tab. We'll click into the diabetes data. So if we scroll down here to the bottom, we see a couple of URIs that refer back to this data file. One of them is its actual location in Azure Blob Store. The one I want is the data store URI. So this is the URI within the Azure ML workspace. So I'm just going to copy that to clipboard. I'm going to go back to my notebook and paste that URI right there. OK, and then so we're going to read that in. Um, we're going to just look at the shape of it and then look at the very top five rows and just see, or three rows and see what we've got. OK, so what we read in was were 10,000 rows of data that have nine columns. And we can look and see what the columns are here. So this is information about patients, so pregnancies, uh, glucose, dystolic, triceps, et cetera. And the predicted column is, is going to be diabetic. So the first three happen all to be zero or false. As you can see, this data has been cleansed already, so we can use it to create the model. Okay, let's add another code cell. In this cell, we're going to split the data between train and test. This is very straightforward. So we're just going to split the data with 70% uh, train and 30% test. So we'll go ahead and run this. And then uh, once it's split, it'll uh, tell us what we actually got in both of the sets. So here we have 7,000 records in train and we have 3,000 records in test. So in the third step, we'll actually create the model. So let me grab the code to do that. And I'll save you watching me type by pasting it in. So this last code snippet will actually train the model using the fit function and we'll use MLflow with Autolog to log statistics and accuracy and then also upload the train model into the Azure ML workspace. So let's go ahead and run the training. Okay, so the training is finished and we can actually see the job that was used to conduct that training. And it's called Frank Station with some random letters that were created for a job name. And if I drill into that, I can see that here's the overview of the training that occurred. And then MLflow logged these metrics. Um, now these are automatically logged and they have sort of machine generated titles. If you want, you can turn off the auto log and log metrics yourself. So maybe don't log all of these and give them better um, uh, names and so on. But auto log is super convenient because it will do all this automatically. And then the auto log also created some output. So a confusion matrix, a recall curve, and an RC curve. So these were automatically created. Again, you could do that manually within the script, but kind of nice that this happens all by itself. And then if I look in the outputs folder, I can see the model. So um, well, these were the same images we saw before. These are all files that are going to be used when deploying the endpoint, and it will inform the endpoint as to what needs to be configured in the endpoint um, 
container and what the inputs and outputs are for the web service call and so on. So with MLflow, we didn't have to do any of this uh, manually. So this gets created auto automatically. We could change this. So these are just files. So if we wanted to change the way this worked, we could do that, but there's really no need in this solution. So we're happy with this model. We want to publish it to an endpoint. There are two things we need to do. One is to register it within the workspace. So it's not registered yet. I could have done this automatically from the script, but I didn't. So we'll do that manually. And the second thing we'll do is to publish the model to an HTTPS endpoint so that applications can make REST calls to do predictions given the inputs that they have. So let's go back to jobs. We'll find the last job that we ran and we're gonna register the model from here. So that model type is MLflow. There's the output. It knows that because I'm within the job. I'll click next. I'm gonna call that my diabetes model. I'm gonna give it a version one and I'm not gonna fill out anything else. Okay, this all looks good. Register. And what that's going to do is take that, those model manifest files and, and register them within the environment. So now if I go in here, I can see I have this diabetes model. So that looks good. So if I click into that, I can see the properties. And then if I'm happy with that, I'll go ahead and, and deploy that. So I can deploy that in a few different ways. So I'm gonna focus on the real time endpoint. So this would be an endpoint that is accessible via post call on demand. So an application might post information about a patient and get back whether they're likely uh, diabetic or not. So let's get started deploying our endpoint. So I need to give this an endpoint name that's unique within the region where I'm deploying it. So I will go with that. It says that's fine. Good. And I think everything's fine. So I'll click deploy. So this says this will take a minute. It will actually take quite a few minutes. Um, so this is deploying resources, um, making DNS changes, getting things good to go on the web. So I'm gonna pause the video and resume once this is finished deploying. Okay, our endpoint is now deployed. So I can see I have a green check here. And I got a notification that it was completed. So that all looks good. The first thing we can do is test the endpoint to see if it works. And if I look at this test endpoint window, so that Azure ML has kind of hinted me at what this payload is supposed to look like. So this is essentially my post payload. And I need to get some data to put into it. So let me just open the original data file that I have on my desktop. Bring it over here and I can see this is my patient ID and then I have these input values and there are eight of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that corresponds to the eight numbers in this input payload and the output is going to be diabetic or not one or zero. So that's how this data is designed. So I'm gonna grab one that will should return a one if the model works. And let me just paste that into here, click test. And so the endpoint returns one, so that's pretty good. And we'll grab one that should return a zero and see if the model does that. I did not practice this in advance, so hopefully it works. Yep, it does work. Okay, so that's our payload. So that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna save a copy of that for a more real world test. Okay, well that looks pretty good. And then the next thing I want to do is test this by actually calling it from an application. So uh, this endpoint is protected by some security. Um, there are a couple ways to do security with endpoints in Azure ML. One is with just a pre-shared bearer token. That's what the default is. That's what's been set up already. So that's called key. The second authentication method is token-based, which is probably more secure for production environments, but takes a little bit more setup. So I'm not gonna cover that in this video. So I'm gonna keep with the key, but I need to know what the key is. So the way I get the key, this is the one thing I need to do at a command line terminal. So let me grab the command to do that and show you what that looks like. So this is running the command line Azure uh, CLI, and it's the ML part of the CLI. 
And here I'm just going to say online endpoint. I want to get credentials. And the name of the endpoint is diabetes test. So you can kind of see diabetes test, diabetes test. Okay, that looks good. Uh, what is the resource group? It's deploy endpoint. So we created that uh, uh, resource group and put this workspace into it. And then it wants to know what is the workspace called? It's called deploy endpoint demo. And it says, I want this as a tab subvert of values file. And I want to get the primary key. I'm only getting one value, so it won't be tabs separated, but go ahead and run that. And it outputs just this. So this is the primary key. So there is a secondary key in case we need to do rotations, but this is the primary key. I'm going to use this for testing. And so if I come in here, I've got the payload I'm going to need. I've got that that I'm going to need. And the other thing that obviously I'm going to need is the, the actual endpoint. So here's the Rust endpoint. So it's diabetes test, which is the name we gave it. East US is the region. This is the rest of the URL. And score is the endpoint name. And this is going to be a, it doesn't say it, but this is going to be a post. So let me copy that to my editor so I can have that. All right, so we have what we need. That's what we're going to call. That's our authentication. That's our input data. And let's go ahead and test this from outside the Azure environment. So to do the test, I'm going to use this application called uh, Rapid API, which is a plug-in to Visual Studio Code. And essentially what it does is it um, simulates a call. So this is a get to their echo test endpoint. So that's a get call. I'm going to create my own request. And I'm going to call this test Azure ML endpoint. And this is going to be a post request. We know that. Um, we have the endpoint, which we saved out of the console here. So let me paste that into the URI. And this is the authentication token. So this is a bearer token. So it's going to be added to the header, but um, Rapid API has this convenient little form to build that. So if I go back to headers, I can see the authorization token is here. That looks good. Um, now we know we're, the content we're going to pass in is going to be um, content type of application JSON. So that one. And I think those are the only headers we need. Then we need to have a body. And that body is going to be here. I'm going to paste that in. Tell it that's JSON, pretty that up a little bit. So these are the the, in, the input values um, that came from the original source data, which to remind you looks like this. So pregnancies, thickness, blood pressure, and so on. And what's not included in this package is, is the end result. So the zeros or ones right there. So let's go ahead and send that request. And we got zero, so uh, that's, I think this one, right? So zero app, that's what we expected. Um, we can also send, since this is formatted as an array of inputs, we can request more than one at a time. So that's kind of nice. Let's do that. And let's, that's that one in, maybe pretty that up a little bit. So there's two. So that last one should be a, a one if the model is working correctly. Um, maybe we'll like grab one more and put that in there. So we'll request three at a time. Bring that up a little bit. So we've got these three inputs. Send the request again, and we get zero, one, one. So, so yeah, that endpoint's working. So that's our endpoint, and we're authenticated with a bearer token. Our payload is JSON. And if you're a developer, or at least have some familiarity with this, so you can see, you know, how you would use this from an actual application in the wild. Okay, so so that's it. I hope that was interesting. I hope it was uh, educational. Um, if you have any questions, leave some comments. Um, I'll see you next time.